morning everybody happy new year it's nice to see you guys happy 2020 so excited to be doing a live session and i know it's super early in the morning it's 8 30 on a monday morning i really wanted to jump into the new year and connect with you and wish you guys a happy new year and then maybe answer some questions live so I have never ever received a package from YouTube before ever. So you know what I think this is? So this you guys, I'm gonna open up with you. Hang on, I'm gonna set this right here. I have a feeling I know what this is. Any guesses? Oh. <laughs> okay, I, I think that this is what I think it is. Yes. This is my 100,000 subscriber plaque, which is so exciting. I was really, really hoping that um, I would hit 100,000 subscribers before the new year, and um, it happened. This is so cool. I remember watching people receive their 100,000 subscriber plaque and I used to think oh my god that's so many people how am I ever gonna get there and it feels almost surreal to have done that we actually hit the hundred thousand subscriber mark when I was on vacation in Vietnam and didn't make a big deal about it and didn't do a shout out or anything like that because I was on holidays and I was staying off of social media so I haven't actually acknowledged hitting 100,000, but I'm so grateful that so many of you guys have subscribed to my channel. So thank you so, so much for doing that. Public. Yeah, there you go. Happy New Year. Hi, 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 hi. Okay, thank you for being patient. Thank you so much for joining. Happy New Year, everyone. It's so nice to see you. I'm so excited to be doing a live session with you guys. And I'm sorry I kept you guys waiting. We had a little bit of technical issues there and um, I was rushing to the office because as you guys know, it's sort of the Monday that everybody is getting back to work after the New Year. Diane is right there. You guys can say hi to little D. <laughs> Um, I was rushing to the office, so I rushed in. I'm still wearing my rain boots because it's wet outside. It's so wet outside. I flew into the office and started doing a live session, but I didn't do it properly. So we're redoing this. It's good to see all of you guys. Josh is here. <laughs> good morning, Josh. Paula is here. Good morning. She's just prepping for the Monday morning meeting and uh, Let's see, we're gonna go live for about 20 minutes, okay? And I know a lot of you guys had already sent questions in on Instagram and on YouTube, which is great. So I've got tons of questions and I definitely wanna answer some of your questions live here. Hi, London. <laughs> There's so many people joining, this is great. Now, first and most importantly, I have something to show you guys. Check this out, you guys. We hit the 100,000 subscriber mark. How cool is that? I'm just setting this down right now. So I had just opened this this morning and um, hadn't had a chance to actually talk about this or announce this on any of my social media. So this is the first time I've ever received anything from YouTube. So I had a feeling that this was the 100,000 subscriber plaque. I really like the new design, actually. It looks really good. They've got sort of this mirrored play button happening. And then um, it says, presented to Karen Bond for passing 100,000 subscribers. So this is really exciting. Thank you guys so much for subscribing to the channel and for getting us over the 100,000 subscriber mark. So yay, Bond Squad. And then this also comes in the box with a letter signed by the CEO of YouTube, which is pretty cool. So I'm gonna read that a little bit later. Okay, well let's get to some of your questions. I would love to know if any of you guys have any questions for me, so please type in any of your questions that you might have. I'm gonna just answer one real quick from my office. Oh, and I think, so I'm in my office right now and you guys have seen this wallpaper, but I'm gonna show this to you guys up close and personal here. Someone is asking, would I open an office in Europe? Yeah, sure, maybe if the, if the opportunity ever came up, but I think I would probably go to Los Angeles first or maybe Toronto. 
but definitely LA. I would love to go into the States. Wow, people from Greece and from Austria, amazing. And then in my office, if you guys have been watching my Instagram, I have my new desk. So this desk is from CB2. It's a mahogany desk. It's got a beautiful dark brown grain with a little bit of lacquer and sheen. I'm loving this desk. So, and, and Oscar is also, he's under my desk right now. I'm trying to see if I, see, can you see him? Yeah, he's under my desk. He found a paper clip, so that's gonna keep him busy for a little while. Hi, Australia. Wow, so many people from so far away. So cool. From New Jersey, hi. <laughs> Philippines, oh my God, you guys, you guys are, in global this is definitely definitely a global bond squad which is super super cool okay so as we get into questions I'm gonna answer um, one question that popped up a lot on my Instagram and uh, on YouTube here and a lot of you guys were asking about how you get clients how do you get your first client how do you get more clients especially when you are a new interior designer I've talked about this a lot before on my YouTube channel but one of the things that I wholeheartedly believe in is cold calling and doing outreach. I think that that is super, super important. Um, I think it's important that you, in the beginning, reach out to as many people as you can. Hi, Kenya. Whether that is friends, family, uh, people that are redoing their bathroom, their bedroom, anybody that needs any kind of decor help, you know, friends of friends. I think you just really need to do as much outreach and hit up as many people as you can to try to get work. And uh, of course, work is slow and gets off to a slow start in the beginning. But what I learned in the first year of my business is that there isn't always a project on the heels of your last project. So I think a lot of creatives tend to think that um, if you're really talented and you're really good at what you do um, and you put out good work that the phone will ring. As soon as you're done a project, somebody is gonna ring, hi Serbia, hi El Salvador, gosh, all over the world, it's crazy. Um, so I was just answering a question about how you get more clients. I think there's a misconception that as a creative, when you finish a project, there's going to be another client picking up the phone that's on the heels of that last project. And that is not always the case. Um, you actually have to go out and hustle really hard for every single project. And so um, that takes a lot of work. You have to really hone in your sales skills. You really have to be okay and comfortable putting yourself out there. If you don't do that, um, you'll probably be just sitting around at home waiting for work to come in and the reality is that the phone might not ring that quickly. So in my first year of business I learned very quickly that you really have to hunt work and I'm just moving to another location. Oh, there's an echo in my boardroom. I'm not gonna go in that room. <laughs> I'm gonna go in the palm room over here. You really have to be comfortable picking up the phone and asking for work. You can't sit around and just wait for work to come in. So more questions. Hi, India. Nice to see you. Hi from California. How do you talk about fees to your first client when you do not have enough experience? Okay, that is a great question. I get that question quite a bit. How do you price your services? How do you talk about fees? There's no easy answer to that and there's actually no right answer to that either. What you want to do, hi Kat, happy new year. What you want to do is instead of trying to guess what the right fee is or what a standard industry fee would be, you have to price yourself where you are comfortable. So what I mean by that is if you are comfortable charging $5 an hour, if you're comfortable charging $40 an hour, if you're comfortable charging $100 an hour, $400 an hour, whatever you are comfortable charging that's what I would recommend that you start with. And then I'd recommend you finish a project and reassess. Do you need to charge more? Are you making any money? Do you, and, and by the way, I also think that when you're starting a business, you have to be okay not making 
a ton of money in the beginning. Maybe you're going to do projects for free in the beginning because you just want to build your portfolio and get experience. That's really important. Or maybe in the beginning you know that you're not making as much money as you should because you're really trying to build your business. So there is a little bit of that sacrifice in the beginning and you can't really expect to make a ton of money when you're first starting out. Once you start to get a little bit more established and you have a rhythm with your services and um, you're starting to build a client base, then you can really start looking at your fees and you can start increasing your fees. Um, so that's kind of how it works. So don't come out of the gates expecting to make a lot of money. Come out of the gates just doing really good work. So someone was asking me, uh, a question just came in about branding or portfolio first. And I think that means, uh, if I understand your question, is do you focus on brand or do you focus on your portfolio first? Hands down, I would think about your portfolio first. If you don't have a portfolio, it's really hard to build a brand. Like they both go hand in hand, but you really want to be building a portfolio first. That's super important. And uh, that's why I would really recommend, don't worry too much about how much money you're gonna make. And if you can have an alternative you know, income stream or if you have um, someone that can help you or if you have savings, like budget for that in the beginning, because, I mean, it's a lot of work to build a business, right? It's a lot of work. So someone just threw up a question about maintaining a really good mental state um, when you're working. And I think that recovery time is very, very important. So taking time off, making sure that you have an appropriate amount of vacation time. Recovery time is so important because as a creative, hi. Good morning. Everyone's starting to roll into the office right now because we're just getting ready for the Monday morning meeting. If you guys keep watching um, later today, we're going to film throughout the day. So we're going to film a day in the life, which is why Diane is here. <laughs> we're kicking off the day this way. A lot of you guys have been saying that you miss the Monday morning meetings and you haven't seen a Monday morning meeting in a really long time. So today we're making sure that we do that for you guys. Now, I'm sorry, I was talking about recovery time and vacation time. As a designer and as a creative person or even as a business owner, being creative on demand, it's a lot of hard work, right? You're forced to be creative in the moment. You have to produce. Um, it's not like you're out for a hike and then inspiration strikes and then you get to make this beautiful art piece. No, you have a deadline and you have to produce within that deadline. And so I think that having time off and recovery time is super important to maintain a really good uh, mental state and um, to be very clear headed and to just continue to make really good decisions. You need to have rest time and downtime. So that's why when I take holidays, I really try to avoid um, doing any work or doing any social media. If I do social media, I just post for fun. Um, I mean, it's always fun. It's fun connecting with you guys, but to make sure that I get that downtime. Okay, so for those of you guys that are joining just now, it's five to nine. So we're getting really close to my Monday morning meeting. Um, I wanna say Happy New Year to those of you who have just recently joined. Hi, Poland. Nice to see you. How much time did it take for you to have a stable inflow of clients? So here's the thing. I think, and I've talked about this a lot on my YouTube channel, I think if you are thinking about doing an interior design business or you have an interior design business and you're just getting it off the ground, I think you really need to think about what you want your role to be. Do you want to be doing a lot of business development and sales? Do you want to be doing more creative work? Answering that question for yourself will give you a lot of insight into who your next hire needs to be. For me, I knew that a big part of what I wanted to do was the sales and business development. And so I really focused on growing and building my business. And now there's more people in the company that help with that kind of stuff. So I, I do get to stay in a creative role. But in the beginning, when you're really trying to build something, hi Switzerland, you're pulled in a lot of different directions. And so I think that um, really being clear about where you want to spend your time um, is important because that will tell you who you need to hire. And make sure that you hire for the roles that you do not wanna do or that you are not good at. Good morning, everybody. 
Let me see. I'm trying to the answer. The questions come up really fast. Someone asked me about my workout routine. So I'm going to answer that real quick because I'm just getting back into working out. <laughs> but I try to do that as religiously and diligently as I can. I really like to work out in the morning. For me, that works the best. Getting up at like 5 or 5.30, having a really good workout in the morning, and then getting ready for my day and starting my day in the office about 9 a.m. Um, and right now I do a combination of uh, trail running, I'm at the gym, yoga, and I kind of rotate through those three things. Um, but yeah, I try to make sure that I work out like three times a week, two at minimum, and then I'm often hiking with Oscar. So you guys, if you watch my Instagram, you'll probably see me hiking with Oscar. Just doing a quick time check here. <gasps> Few more minutes until our Monday morning meeting. Okay, so I'm gonna take a question and Happy New Year to those of you guys who are joining the channel just recently. What software do we use in the office? We use lots, we use AutoCAD, we have Revit, we have SketchUp, we have Photoshop, we have InDesign, we have the whole Microsoft Office Suite. We use a lot of different programs in the office. How do you love your videos? Quick question. Oh, I got to read them faster. Sorry. How do you remain present and in the moment? Present and in the moment. Whew, that is a good question. How do I remain present and in the moment, especially when there's so much stuff on the go? That is very difficult. I really like that question though. I think you have to be intentional about being really present and in the moment. I, strangely enough, I actually have my phone on do not disturb almost every day and all day long because I really can't stand it when my phone is buzzing and beeping at me throughout the day. I find that super distracting. And if you guys watch my day in the lives, you know that I go from a lot of different meetings, like back to back meetings throughout the day. There's not a lot of breathing time in my uh, between meetings. And so whenever I'm in a meeting, like if I'm in a design meeting, I really like to focus on design. If I'm in a financial meeting, I really like to focus on finances. I really like to focus on just what's in front of me. So I keep my phone off and respond to questions and texts and stuff like that when I carve out time for that. Okay, so another question is, why don't I hire men? Well, there's one right there. And there's one right there. So we do have men in the office. And we have lots of women too. Kat's here. Vanessa's back there. <laughs> we have both men and women in the office. And dogs. Hi, Tennessee. Okay, quick question. What do you, when did you decide to add staff? I'm terrified. Okay, I like this question because this has come up a lot on Instagram and on YouTube. When did I decide to hire staff? Ben, do you mind just grabbing the door there? I decided to hire in the very beginning. So as soon as I started my business, I realized very quickly that I was not going to be successful if I did not have help. And that was a personal decision. I know lots of designers who freelance, who work on their own, and they have a formula that really works for them. But I decided to hire pretty much coming like right out of the gates. And so I've always operated my business with like an assistant or someone that was helping with CAD drawings. Uh, that was really important to me. And I knew early on, like I was saying before, that I wanted to focus on sales and getting new business. And in order to do that, I needed someone to help me execute the business that I currently had. So yeah, I hired right away. And it's not like I had money in the bank and all of these savings and we were, I could float that person. I knew that it was a risk, but I knew that if I didn't do that, I wouldn't grow. So that's, that was my thinking around hiring a person and I, I never looked back. So it is super scary and I was scared, <laughs> um, but that it worked for me. How did I develop confidence as a businesswoman? That's a great question. I develop confidence just by doing. I mean, here's the thing, you guys. If you never try, you're not gonna know. If you don't take the risk because you're afraid of failure, well, let me tell you, failure is a huge part of the process. I actually think that failure is part of success. They're not two different things, 
if you've listened to some of my previous videos, which maybe we'll throw up links to that, I had major catastrophes in my business career and interior design career and lots of financial losses along the way too. And I think failing really hard can be sometimes the platform for your success and a really important part of success. So don't be afraid of failure. I would actually embrace it. There's so much learning that comes from failure. And um, the more you can fail, I think the more success that you'll actually have. How did you finance the start of your business? It was from the bank of credit cards. That's how I financed my business. And um, question Diane is handing me the phone here. What is your main goal for this year, both on professional and personal levels? Okay, so this question came through Instagram. My main goal for the year, personally and professionally. Well, last year was a big year. We focused on a lot of growth. We expanded the team. We moved the office. We grew our client base. So you guys have been watching the channel. You would have seen all of that growth happen. It was definitely a very, very big growth year. So for 2020, I wanted to make sure that I focus on joy. That's very important to me. So I'm, I want to seek more joy out. I want to have more fun at work. I want to have more fun with my friends and family. I want to do things that really fill me up and make me happy. Um, and then I also want to focus a lot more time on friends and family and my social life. I know that sounds really weird, but I get so much fulfillment from work and the office and all my team and clients. We have great clients and great collaborators, but for 2020, I really want to focus more on my friends and family. Okay, guys, we are, it's almost time for the Monday morning meeting. We're actually late. Everybody is waiting for me because I am doing this YouTube live. So Thank you guys so much for subscribing to my channel. Thank you so much for the helping me hit the 100,000 mark. I'm gonna sign off and say Happy New Year to everybody. Karina's here now. We're doing a YouTube Live for the new year. Okay, you guys, signing off. Thank you for joining me. Um, have a great day. Happy New Year, and uh, I'll see you guys soon. Bye. It is so fresh. Look how beautiful it is.